I think, Luciano, it's probably fair to say one of the most uh, grievously mistreated members of the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn as a result of the anti-Semitism that has now been um, clarified, confirmed and indeed described as a breach of equality laws, laws that your party introduced. How are you processing today's development? Well, thank you for having me on your programme today. And um, it's obviously a very, very difficult day. Um, people have described this as the darkest day in Labour's history. I, I wouldn't say that's today because I welcome the report and um, the comprehensive investigation that the EHRC, the Equalities Commission, have conducted. But certainly it reflects upon, I think, the darkest period in Labour's history. And as we've heard today, you know, the Commission's investigation have identified very serious failings in the Labour Party leadership in addressing anti-Semitism. They found them guilty of political interference, of harassment, of discrimination, uh, and unfortunately it just exposes the experience that myself and regrettably many other Jewish Labour Party members faced. What, what happened to you in your constituency? My own experience is one of uh, a catalogue of deeply disturbing incidents that took place over a number of years. Um, I was subject to sustained levels of online uh, and in-person anti-Semitism, harassment and discrimination from people that were known Labour Party members, from people that described themselves as Labour Party supporters. I was on the receiving end of accusations of conspiracy, of bad faith, of dual loyalty to uh, this country and Israel. Uh, the volume and the toxicity of the abuse that I was on the receiving end of was particularly acute um, towards the last two years that I was in the Labour Party. Um, I found myself on the front page of The Times in October 2018 because it came to light that the Labour Party had was in fact aware of a, a physical threat made against me uh, by a Labour Party member and for six months didn't inform either myself or the police. My team in my constituency office in Liverpool received a hand-delivered letter that said that I was going to have acid thrown on me, that I was going to be raped and stabbed by people that uh, signed off as being supporters of Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, the list went on. Yes. I had to take extensive personal security measures. Uh, my freedom of movement was limited. It was uh, a relentless experience in the last few years that I was in the Labour Party. Okay, culminating in your decision to, 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 to leave the party altogether. Indeed. Did you see enough today from Keir Starmer to want to come back into the Labour movement? The Labour Party and Keir Starmer will be, ju will be judged on on their actions. The response today is an important one, but it's what happens over the course of the coming weeks and months, first and foremost, to respond to their legal requirement, mm. uh, to respond to the unlawful act notice that they've been served by the Equalities and Human Rights Commission and the many different elements that they have to respond to and things they have to implement. Again, they will be judged on, on what they actually do. And you know I have to ask for your response to Jeremy Corbyn's claim that the scale of the problem was dramatically overstated for political reasons. And I, I just for the record, Luciana, I'm more uncomfortable asking you that than anyone else I've put it to today for, for reasons that you've just outlined. But I, I, I must ask you. I, I have no words for that response today. It, that response is off the back of an extensive... 18-month investigation by a statutory body that, as you pointed out at the start, was created by the Labour Party when it was in government. And that independent public body has found the Labour Party today guilty of serious failings, and it lays the blame squarely at the door of the Labour Party leadership, of which Jeremy Corbyn was at the helm. And... What people were looking for today was some acknowledgement of the pain and the hurt and the distress caused to so many, whether that was in the party or the, the wider impact on the British Jewish community in this country. And in fact, not just the British Jewish community, but other minority communities that were worried about, would it be them next? 
because the experience of one minority community is not often confined to that minority community and that response just is beyond the pale is that why you are in let me choose my words more carefully that the last time i saw you i hope you don't mind me mentioning this was appropriately enough at an Anne Frank trust event and um you you are a politician and a person uh, albeit that you're not in politics anymore of great energy and enthusiasm and and even i would add joy de vivre and i wondered today when we arranged to talk to you whether you'd be in a slightly more if not celebratory, then a boolean mood, because there is a vindication here after years of pain and suffering, and yet there's very little in your demeanour, Luciana, that, that, that suggests celebration. I think that would be a fair assessment. Uh, the Labour Party was my, was my home. It was what I dedicated my adult life to, and I, I, even having to arrive at the decision to leave it in the first place was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I want to see the party rehabilitated to and be restored to the place that it should rightly hold, which is as one of the two main political parties in this country and, and a party that actually is true to the values that led many people, including myself, to join it. Those values of equality for all and anti-racism and social justice. Uh, that's the force that the Labour Party should be. And... I count myself lucky. I, I reflected on the experience of myself and uh, the impact that it had on my family and my friends and, and my staff. But I, I'm acutely aware for, for some people that the toll was even greater. Uh, and we're able to have this conversation today, But um, and I've come out the other side, but for mm. others, they still, they, they deeply bear those scars. And there is a very, very long road ahead.